Good morning, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I'm in Saidan, Lebanon, in the south of Lebanon, but locally it's known as Saida, the Arabic name. Today, we are gonna go on a food tour of Saidan. We're gonna eat a lot of the local foods that are unique to Saidan. It's an ancient city. We're gonna walk around the old markets, the old souks. We're gonna see some of the famous sites, eat a lot of food. My friend Kamal is from Saidan, so he knows all the back streets. We'll be hanging out with Maya and Fadi and also have a couple friends with us as well and we are gonna show you all of the food and give you a full tour of the amazing fascinating city of Sidon, Lebanon. We're getting into the old souks, into the old part of Sidon which is the main part of the the city that we're gonna be exploring today. The spices, the fresh fruits and vegetables. I'm already loving it and we've just been here for three minutes. I did my intro right next to a, a pan of almonds. So you may as well try some of the green almonds right really good. Yeah. When they're green. Oh yeah. You can eat the whole skin and all. Good morning, Camel. Morning. So we haven't tried this yet. This is, uh, I just went to that guy, said, what do you have? And this is the best thing I think that he has on his uh, cart. Uh, licorice, a cup of liquid licorice. Oh, yeah, I love it too. It's not that sweet. Very medicinal tasting though, like bitter. You're trying his kharoub as well. Okay. The guy thinks that the kharoub here is nicer than the one in Italy. What is this one? Kharoub. The kharoub. Uh, kharoub. Oh yeah, the kharoub. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. From that pine tree, right? We, the man here, he's insisting we try this version in, in Sidon as well. Ooh. That is sweet. Shukran. Did I ever disappoint you? Like, never. We are just immediately getting into the market. You see the meats, the fresh seasonal vegetables. There's a lot of seafood in Sidon as well. I think we're gonna try to find a place that is specializes in fish in the market. Um, just straight fresh fish. I think that might be the first thing we eat, the first thing we eat for breakfast today. But the vibrancy, the colors, the action, I'm already loving it here. Smells good. The aromas, the aromas coming out of this market are fantastic. Oh, we actually go into the market to choose our fish. Oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. They're they're really proud of their fish. Um, Just look at the lemon. Hey. Uh, they have a selection of fish, especially trying to look, focus on the local fish, which are the sardines and the the red mullets. And then we'll also get a few of these. What are these ones called? Litmus? Lutons. Which is also a local from the waters here off of the coast of Lebanon and off of Sidon. <laughs> Everything is deep frying, bubbling away. The fish, one type of fish in here, one type of fish in that side, and then the fries are going. You gotta eat fries, but like the bubble of the oil is bubbling. The fish, fresh deep fried fish. I love it. I guess we have had a lot of fried bread, but already fried. I didn't get to see them them fry it, but he just fried the fish, and like right after the fish, he chucks on he like like frisbees. He like uses this bread as frisbees and throws them into the oil. Oh man, they're just drenched and fried and crispy. That bread, it's still dripping in oil, dipped in the tahini. Yeah, the freshness of that fried bread. It's so good. It is oily and greasy and so good. Okay. 
He just, he rocked those shrimp. He first, I think that was olive oil or butter, maybe butter, uh, but ignited that on fire and then left them to cook. And then finally at the end, I think it's a mixture of coriander and lemon juice, probably a little bit of uh, olive oil as well. And just like that just exploded with fire and you just rocked it. Oh, that was a great job. That smells so good, just like fire roasted. That you smell the lemon, you smell the seared coriander in there. Try that shrimp first as the first bite because that's right out of the pan. He just fried that like amazingly. Oh wow! <laughs> oh that that explosion of fire equals explosion of flavor. Wow! That's what it's like. Man, in this part of the world, there's only one thing you can do with sauce: wipe it up with bread. That makes it way better. You have like triple the amount of sauce in your mouth at once. The garlic, wow, the coriander. Try those sardines freshly, freshly deep fried just with a squeeze of lemon on them. What I love about it, it's not even salted. Those are just the pure, fresh sardines, just deep fried in oil. Crispy, but so good. So fresh, so tasty. This is the mutabo, which is the, the roasted eggplant. With some of the fresh fried bread. Oh wow. The smokiness, the creaminess. The tahini in there, the olive oil, the sumac. Okay, I'm gonna try one of the red mullet fish, deep fried, but in Arabic it's called the Sultan. Sultan Ibrahim. Sultan Ibrahim, the Sultan fish. This is a, a well-respected fish and I also love eating it. I'll just try it plain first, but then I want to try some of the, the sauce that goes with it. Yeah. It's a wonderful fish. Again, not even salt on this fish. And some of the smaller bones you can just chew right through because they've been deep fried for so long. The shak shakshusha? Shakshuka. Shakshuka. Yeah, shakshuka. It's a mix. There's tomatoes. There's a number of different chili peppers in here. You can really smell the garlic. And then he sprinkles cashews on top. I'm going to add some of this to my plate. And then I'll probably add some of the, the patouche to my plate as well to mix those juices, get everything going. There's lettuce in here. There's cabbage. There's tomato. There's a lot of sumac in this patouche as well. I'm moving back into the fish now. I gotta try it with some of that. It's almost like a like a, a simmered down wilted tomato sauce with chilies. It's just it's so fragrant. <laughs> oh the garlickiness of that, the like coolness of the tomatoes, the onions, the crunch of the cashew. That is so good. Garlicky burst of flavor. Okay, next up for the, the rock lit us. It looks, I'm not totally sure what the English name is, but then mix, I'm gonna take some of the shakluqfa and some of the, the tahini and mix that around. In fact, I might add a little more tahini to this bite. Oh wow, with yes. the tahini, that like yes. enriches it. But you've got the flavor of the shakshuka and the freshness of the fish. Mm. Mm. Yummy, man. That's incredible. And then balance all that with some salad. Mm. The salad is good too. All of that sumac gives it a wonderful citrusy flavor. There is lemon juice in here as well. It's a must for every meal. This is a perfect combination. I've got the, the tahini on here. I've got the, the shakshuka. Yes. Shakshuka. I've got the, um, the sardines in there. Mix this up a little bit. 
You should pick that up with bread. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, wow. That's a wonderful combination. Mm -hmm. Good job. That shakshusha is just so good. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Surprise! Shukran. Bye bye. Shukran. Thank you so much. So nice. They're so cool. We wanted to pay. They wouldn't accept payment from us. These guys. These guys are cool. They're right, and not only like good seafood, but you have a view of the castle, the sea castle, right as you're sitting there. It's time to get started walking around the old market, the old souks of Sidon. Make a left hand turn, and we are immediately in the old souk, a quiet part of the old souk. There's carpets, there's uh, handy, handmade products. What are we stopping this at here? Oh, yes. Okay. Food and hummus in town. <laughs> it's been like one minute since the fish <laughs> feast. We're having hummus Another now. Feast. This is something I've, yeah, I've wanted to have their hummus here in Saidan, in one of the most famous places for hummus in Lebanon. You can walk in here. Um, he has a takeaway counter here, and then they even have some seats down the, the alley down there. So we're just gonna, uh, I don't know where we should sit. Maybe, maybe just down the inside is cool too. Anyway, he's gonna make us a family platter, family-sized bowl of hummus. This guy is legit. That's, the, that's a very nice chili sauce. He makes it himself. I wish people can smell it. So much going on here in this like closet sized shop. This is a, an amazing shop. He makes the hummus from scratch. It's his family recipe, 50 year old family recipe. Uh, the chickpeas, and he uses actually no recipe actually. It's just by eyeball sight. He pours in the tahini, he pours in the lemon juice, and then, oh man, he's just not even stopping on the dishes either. Yeah. Okay, food is all ready. That one like overjoyous, like cooking sensation experience. He whipped up everything. The chickpeas, the fool. I'm very excited to try everything, and we're we got a table down here. <laughs> that is next. One minute, level. Press, one minute, one minute. Never in my life have I seen a more beautiful display of hummus, chickpeas, and fava beans. This is the most whole. Oh, thank you, Ramil. <laughs> yeah, Ramil, as we were watching him make all the different dishes, the hummus and the fate and the ful, uh, Ramil went to go get fresh baked bread, Sidon special bread. Maya, join us, yes. The fate, you gotta dig down below because there's bread, there's chickpeas on the bottom of there, there's minced meat and then the the ultimate move that he pulled off is he simmered a bunch of cashews in ghee not olive oil ghee animal fat and then like poured that on top to sizzle it this is the bite cheers, cheers. <laughs> wow wow i love it thank you for the fatte treasure with the onion onion pickle anything oh wow Never in my life have I had fatia like that. Yes. This one, it like smooth, despite it's like ghee in there, it's actually very smooth and like kind of light. And the bread 
Yeah. The fried bread has just soaked it up with the meat juices, with the chickpeas, with those cashews. I think those cashews is what just like puts it over the top delicious. That is like borderline insane. Mm. Just a second more, just a second. The hummus with the minced meat on top, with the cashews on top, and then a scoop of chili, chili sauce on top. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. I've never tasted hummus like that. That is insane. Those cashews on top. The minced meat. That chili sauce is incredible. So good that I've never seen you speechless before like this. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Ramel is, is feeding everyone. <laughs> That's a bite of love. That fool was one of the greatest he made. He, what I loved about it is that he took a bowl. He mashed the fresh mint, the garlic, the coriander in there. He mashed it with a melon until it, with, with salt. And then he added lemon juice. He added the cool, the fava beans. He added chickpeas and then he just like drenched it in olive oil. Then he uh, sprinkled on some chili powder and then covered it with more herbs, a combination of both mint and uh, coriander. Dripping with love. Mm. Oh, taste quickly. Pickle, pickle. That, that is stunning. And it's actually not lemon juice. It's a special type of citrus that only grows inside them. Wow. And mint. It's great to chase things always with a pickle and mint leaves. That pool is just, it's a life changing pool. Also, I'm gonna allow myself to. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, up, thank up, you. Upgrade your, your dish. <laughs> yeah. Mint. And some mint in the tea as well? Yeah, we can do it. We can have, we have fresh mint. Yeah, we can do it. We can have, we can have fresh mint. Try the fool in the bowl. Mix in some of the chili, caramel mixed in some of the chili sauce, add, garnish it with mint, with onions, and actually I'll just use an onion to scoop it up. Just, oh man. Cheese. cheese, pickle cheese. Oh wow. I've had pool throughout this whole region. That's the best pool I've ever had. I think his key is mashing up those herbs in the in the bowl before mixing them, as well as the bitter orange juice. And those fresh herbs, they just shine in there. Mm. Wrapping the bread, I think I've got it down. I think you, you make a little ledge like that. Then you fold it. There we go. Is that right? I'm getting the hang of it. So you have a nice pure pocket, a scooper. And we've just been trying everything else. We ha I haven't even dipped in yet to the actual just single plate of hummus, the, the family platter of hummus. Just going right in because I want to maximize the olive oil. I want some of those herbs. Oh, and that scooper. Actually, you can kind of, you can also kind of cheat and use a spoon to, to scoop it on. I want some of that coriander too. Okay, there we go. That's like a proverb here. Everything needs to be olive oiled. Oh, that's a huge bite of hummus, actually. <laughs> that's a huge. <laughs> that is a huge bite of hummus. Oh my God! I haven't seen Mark's face like that <laughs> since we've come up to Lebanon. It's just like it becomes one with your mouth. Like you don't even feel it in your mouth. It's just like the same temperature, the same. It's like one of those, the floating, floating therapy, except in your mouth. This one, I'm gonna chili sauce. Oh, and Chase, I'm gonna try this one. I don't even know what this is. Now this food actually is the perfection of food. It's like yeah. the ultimate. That is food. And you saw how he made it. Yeah. I'm gonna go as far as saying it might be the greatest bean dish on earth. Whoa! <laughs> Maybe. Uh, news flash, everybody, news flash. <laughs> Mark Weens is having this bowl of uh, food, and he just said this uh, amazing thing about it. It is one of the greatest bean dishes in the world. I can't argue with that. This food is the best food I've had in my life here in Saida. So where was he? Where I'm just on a complete nice bean high right now. That was, where was this guy? those were beans on the next level. 
Wow. The hummus here, but that, I think, actually my favorite dish of this entire spread, of this entire meal, is the full. That, and just his precision without measuring his experience, the way he mashed everything up, that bitter orange juice, but this entire spread is what made it incredible in this alley, in the ancient streets of Sidon. This is, what a meal to remember. What a bean to remember. <laughs> Hello, how are you? We haven't done any walking yet today. We've, we've walked like like 12 meter, meters so far today, but we have eaten a lot of food. <laughs> now it's time to, actually I feel it would be really nice to sit down. So we might head for a coffee shop, uh, but we are gonna walk through the, the streets a little bit. Thank you. Ancient arched alleyway and this there it's an artisan he makes cotton candy local Sidon style cotton candy this is could be the, or, the origins of cotton candy you know where it started uh, but they there's these, these long strands it looks like a wig almost but it's flour and sugar that's it made into strands of strings and he like dusts off the extra flour and this is artisan cotton candy way before artisan existed this is the real artisan Flower in the air. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that is very sweet. It is like it's like strands of sugar, like strings of sugar. Just a quick background, a quick history. This is an ancient, ancient city dating back thousands and thousands of years. It was one of the most important Phoenician seaports. In the ancient history, Sidon had many conquerors from the Assyrians to the Babylonians, Egyptians, Persians, and Greeks. Uh, so the different civilizations that have passed through here, it's been mentioned in the Bible many, many times. And then it is also said both Herod the Great visited Sidon, as well as Jesus and St. Paul. They've all visited Sidon. This is a city with immense, deep, historical significance. It's a functioning full city in the ancient city, and there's markets, there's everything. Right here, we are at one of the oldest cafes in Sidon, in the old city. It looks spectacular. Wow, loving this place. Only fans with a shelter. The tables. This place is amazing. Oh, it's so cool. You could feel, you could actually feel the history here. Ramil, how long has this coffee shop been here? Hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. It's really old. It's really old, yeah. Uh -huh. You can feel it. On the, on the pole, right? That is the real deal Lebanese, but like Ottoman Turkish influenced coffee. He does it so well, mixes in that coffee, stirs it over the fire, and then what he does is he puts it over the coals, which is even more traditional as it keeps on cooking, as it keeps on heating, as it keeps on brewing. As I'm about to taste my first sip of coffee, he's come, he's come around. This is also a traditional part of the culture. Huge raisins, almonds, almonds and, walnuts. and walnuts. If anything, I would take... Uh, no. Wait. Cool. Ramil, also thank you for showing us around, man. Can't wait to try this coffee and he just made it expertly. That is good coffee. Yeah, that is, it's really smooth, really dark. You can sip this coffee all day long and this is the type of coffee that like, it's just made for ancient coffee shops like this. One of the greatest parts of this culture in this entire region of the world is just sitting at old coffee shops like this, just socializing, spending time, drinking coffee. have this experience of watching but to, for them to allow us to film that's rare. 
you know, like, and be friendly about it. It's a very rare experience. Very cool. This is a part daily life, daily life, you know, like for, for some of these men here. We're on old side as everyone knows by now, and in that building, that's where my dad grew up. It's his grandparents' place, so there's a very nice court inside. That's cool, right next to the coffee shop. Right so he probably has like, he probably came he here. He doesn't talk frequently. a lot about that part of his life, but yeah, I'm probably sure. Very cool that it's just a pedestrian. Actually, like these streets are all pedestrian plus electric. I think they only allow electric motorbikes, so it's quiet. This is a public square, just a center area. There's a mosque, there's cafes around. Very cool. Enter into the, so Ramil has explained to me we're entering into the carpenter's section of the souk now. We're entering the, camp, the carpenter's section. We'll all find woodwork. A lot of, uh, Already seeing some the of the and furniture can available. The wood. Oh yeah, the pine. Mm, the pine oh, wood. immediately you can smell the pine and you can find walking some, in uh, here. Yeah, Maybe the cedars tomorrow. are just wafting through this alleyway and that breeze. As soon as you step into one of these darker alleys, you get that breeze. That's for the kibbe. Ah, yeah. Camel's doing some shopping for the shop. Special type of um, cookies that I'm selling at the ah. shop. That's the mold used for those. Cool. Yeah. Step into another, like when you go and come out of a, a dark covered alley, which is more of the buildings. Thank you. Have a great day, man. You get into more of an area that's open, getting in the natural light and the natural air. And then again, you step under a covered alleyway. <laughs> Hey, the mistake. Here's the stick. Oh, it's so, it's so soft. So <laughs> I think that's the third time someone's feeding you today. Third time someone's feeding me today. I think that's right. That one is like a sweet. And you can taste that, like it's the Arabic gum, that kind of like sap. It's good. It has like almost a an herb taste to it, like almost like sage rosemary flavor to it. It's so hard fishing for clients like us. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for us. And you know with this heat? Mm. It's fresh. You can feel the zest of the lemons inside. Yeah. Try it please. Thank you. A sip of the lemonade. Oh, die. Mm. It is pretty good, yeah. <laughs> for a random lemonade that just passed by. <laughs> it's very good. Micah, try it. Micah, try it. <laughs> this is an amazing passageway and what's amazing also about Saidan is the mix of Christianity, uh, Islam and the religions all coexisting, I mean from ancient times until today within this tight quarter, within this ancient town that we're going to visit. We're going to a palace next, the Red Roofed Palace. We got tickets to the palace, we're going to climb the staircase going up. The palace was built in 1721 by a man from Morocco, right in the heart of the old city of Sidon, and it's still owned and operated by a Lebanese family. The mansion was abandoned for a long time during one of the civil wars and then it was reoccupied, renovated still by a, now by a Lebanese family just in the year 2000 actually. Uh, this is a living room, relax room and then yeah. one of the main highlights of this room is the, the ceiling made from cedar wood. Oh, wow, look at that detail. Uh, just walking through the center of this mansion now, it really, truly is a masterpiece of architecture and design and preservation. Staircase is getting more and more narrow. It's one of those places where there's just room after room, you don't even know how many rooms there are. Keep coming. Cool. Up to the top with a view over the city. Amazing. That was 
kind of a dense, dark clothing alley down there that we just came out of. I think maybe the power went out, that's why it's so dark. Right where we started in the morning. That was just a, that wasn't even a big circle, it was just a little circle. Oh, I can smell it, I can smell it. They are coming. Look at that thing. So Abu says that people from Jordan come here to him to his shop to eat uh, the falafel and find out 67 years of falafel making and those are like some of the biggest falafels. They're like, and they're rounder, they're, they're big, big falafels. I need to have this... Oh wow, you're doing something. I'm telling you Mark, this is going to be one of the best falafel sandwiches that you've ever had. These guys are the falafel kings of Lebanon, man. He, Camel just asked him as he's making the falafel, how do you keep track of which ones went in first, you know, so that you can keep track of which ones have been cooking longer. And he just like kind of smirked at Camel and he's like, son, I've been making this for 40 years. Don't ask me a question like that. Oh man, the aroma's coming out of here. That is just a jacuzzi of bubbling oil. And those falafels, the aromas coming out of this window, watching him are just insane. We have to try it. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot wait any longer. <laughs> Yes. At Banadura. Now that is the way to make a falafel sandwich, man. He just is so generous with the vegetables. He chucks on like a whole handful of the cilantro, the par, the coriander. He adds on the pickles. He adds, he just with like double fists. He double fists the tomatoes to put them on. And I, my favorite part is when he, from a jug, from a like pitcher, he pours on the tahini just like in like a, it's like a, it's like a painting splatter. And that cross section is just, it looks like a burger. It looks like a burger. <laughs> okay, we have those sandwiches which we already got, but then we also asked for some uh, falafel on the side and Abu Rami, he hooked up an entire plate, pickles with all the salad. He's very generous with his salad here, the vegetables, and then just drenched it all in tahini. We just need some chili sauce, and here it comes. Here it comes. Yes. yes. We are ready. So we're gonna try the. Oh. <laughs> we're gonna try the just the falafel. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna try just the the, the falafel, falafel on its own before the sandwich. I'm just going pure falafel before anything, though. Okay, your falafel is just a little bit of. Cheers! 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 Yeah, cheers, Micah, cheers, Micah. Micah. cheers. cheers. That, that is a falafel, yeah. It's perfectly fluffy. Mm. Meaty. Mm. You taste that like allspice, the cardamom almost in there. Thank you. Oh, wonderful, look at that falafel bite. Oh, beautiful. That is superb. That is superb. With the pickle, yeah, with the pickle. With the chili sauce. Mm. Crunchy goodness. Herbaceous. Just 67 years of experience in one falafel. This is a monster falafel sandwich. I love the way he makes it, just throwing on things and just splattering it in tahini. But that, like, he wraps it in such a way that the falafel on 180 degrees around your entire sandwich and that cross section is beautiful. Probably the most beautiful falafel sandwich I've ever seen or held in my hand before. Mm. Just one thing that would make it better. A chili rejuice. Yes. That is needed. Mm. And take those as well. And go tomatoes. For bite. Yeah, tomatoes are just falling out the side. Yeah, go. Uh huh. You got it. You got combination. And the parsley. Mm. Mm. The tahini. In fact, I need to re-dip actually.
that is what you call a reducing of the falafel. It's been reduced. First, I want to say a huge thank you to USAID, USAID for funding my trip to Lebanon and for handling the logistics. And I want to say a big thank you to Maya for organizing a lot of this trip, my trip to Lebanon, which has been spectacular. Thank you also to Ramil, who showed us around Sidon, as well as Camel, who's from Sidon, um, and his family is from here. So what a good day with friends, with Fadi, hanging out, eating, exploring this ancient, a city with so much history, so much culture, so much amazing food. And finally, I want to say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, click the subscribe button. Also, there's a little bell icon that you can click so you get notified of the future videos that I publish on spot, on time. Thanks again for watching and see you. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, Zaid. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> Ziad. Best driver in Lebanon. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next video. <laughs> what a day.